Hey guys, look at this. Look at this weather. Can you believe this is Scotland? So, I'm out with my Realme X50 Pro and what I'm going to do is a series of camera tests. I want to show you the camera capabilities of this phone. It's got a dual selfie camera at the front and it's got a quad camera system at the back. Now, what I'll be showing you is watching all the good and the bad everything about this camera. So I won't be using a lavalier mic, I won't be using any kind of external microphone. What you hear is what you'll get with the phone. So you'll hear some noise in the background just now as well. Now I'll be recording all of these clips at 1080p at 30 frames per second. Firstly because that's what the front camera can do. It can do 720 and 1080p at 30 frames per second. So it allows me to sync that with the back camera. But also because the back camera you can do 720, 4K, 1080p, do it 30 frames or 60 frames per second. But if you use 4K, you don't get the ultra wide lens. If you use a 1080p at 60 or 4K at 60, you don't get that ultra wide lens. So 1080p, 30 frames per second makes sense as well for the back camera because it allows me to show you, well, everything, all aspects of the camera and all capabilities. So let's see what this phone can do. So the X50 Pro has got two cameras at the front. The first one is a 32 megapixel wide angle lens and that's what you're looking at. The other option is an 8 megapixel ultra wide. Now, when you click record, you can't simply zoom between the different magnifications. You have to choose either the wide or the ultra wide. So you need to make that decision before you start recording. It's a very different story with the back cameras. It's a quad camera system, there's a 64, a 12, an 8 and a 2 megapixel sensor and they all do different things, telephoto, portrait etc. But you don't have to choose which one you want before you start recording. I am currently currently recording at one time zoom, i.e. regular, and I can go down and up. So I can go to the ultra wide macro lens and you can see the quality changes, but I can also change it, that's two times zoom. So that's now two times zoom and I can also go all the way up. Now it's actually hard for me to see, that's one thing I would say about this, out in the daylight, even with the brightness up, it can be difficult to see what you're doing here, but I can go all the way to 20 times zoom. Now I'm, I'm of the opinion that you know this kind of level of zoom sounds good on paper, but the practicality is that you know beyond a certain level the video becomes unusable but you do have it it's maybe something you'll maybe use more when you're taking photographs so what i want to do now is check the stabilization this is the selfie camera i've just got it um, in regular selfie camera mode the wide angle and if i run like this it's just a little jog you can get an idea of stabilization but the official app's got a feature called ultra steady so that obviously improves stabilization and as a vlogger, if you can call myself that, but if you're vlogging, this is something that you'll like. Um, let's see how effective this is. That's with Ultra Steady. So the Ultra Steady feature is available in the ultra wide lens as well. But I don't have it activated yet. This is just the regular ultra wide lens. And this is how shaky it is when you're moving around. And now, Ultra Steady is activated. Jumping around, trying to mess this video up. How is it coping? Let me know what you think. So the main camera has that stabilization feature too. So I'm just panning around. It's not activated yet. And if I jog a little bit, you can see what happens if I'm running around. So now Ultra Steady has been activated. And let's see how this helps if I'm bouncing around. It should help the jumping around. Obviously there's only so much a phone can do when it comes to stabilizing video recording, but it will be better. The back camera has got another trick up its sleeve. You can record in a regular mode, you can record in ultra steady, but there's also ultra steady 
max. So, how does this change things? Does this make a big difference to the stabilisation? Let me know what you think. But it's pretty cool that Realme have put in a few different stabilisation options. So another really cool feature in the default camera app of the Realme X50 Pro is the bokeh effect and you can take it for photos or for videos. So it defaults to 60% and that's what I've got it set at just now. And now I have it set at 100%. So you can set it at anything you want, you know, anything between zero and 100%. And what it will do in photos and in videos is bring you into focus and make everything in the background a little bit fuzzy. And you can just see how I kind of pop out here. So just pop out, you know, and that's what the bokeh effect will do. And it, it seems to work really well. So now I'm using the bokeh effect with the ultra wide lens and the selfie camera. And I've set the bokeh effect to 100%. And you can see that I'm in focus. Everything else is all a little bit fuzzy, a little bit uh, blurred out in the background. And this isn't obviously something you should use all the time, but I think this is quite a cool effect. Certainly when you're taking photos, this is something that I could see myself using a lot. It's pretty cool. So now I'm using the back camera and you can see that it's focusing on my watch. I've got the bokeh effect set at 50%. But I can change that to anything between 0 and 100%. So now I have the bokeh set to 100%. And I can still zoom in. Which is pretty, quite cool. So I can zoom in all the way to 10 times. Not to 20 times, but 10 times. I can't use the macro lens. I can go to 1 times to 10 times. But this is at 100% and this is how effective it can be with the back camera. So you can see that my hand will go into focus and everything else will be blurred out. So one thing you might have noticed is that when I'm using the bokeh effect, which is on just now, the stabilisation isn't great. And that's because you can't use the stabilisation and the bokeh effect at the same time. I'm not sure if this is something that they can change in the future with a software update or if this is some sort of hardware limitation. I need to check into that. But certainly at the moment, you have to kind of pick one or the other. So there's 10 different filters that are available as well. I think this one's F8. Just give you a kind of different colour palette and you'll see some of them are brighter, some are black and white, some are sep sepia, etc. Nice little bonus. And it can really change what you're recording. This is F5, I believe. And this is F3, or filter 3. Colours are really, really nice. So as you can see, I'm in my car now, and because it's so sunny today, it is boiling in here. But I want to go out, I want to test the stabilisation of the phone when you're driving, to see, you know, just to see if it could be used as a vlogging machine when you're driving. And obviously I want to minimise the sound as well, so I'm going to keep the windows up. Uh, you will hear the engine, but you're not going to hear any noise from the radio or anything like that. I'm trying to minimise noise as best as possible. So pay attention to the, the audio quality coming from the microphone and pay attention to the stabilisation and get the radio off now. So let's get to it. So the one thing I'll say right off the bat is that I can hear a little bit of noise but that's not the phone, that's actually coming from my suction cup and phone holder. So there might be a little bit of noise coming through the microphone just now, coming from the phone shaking. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any way to, to fix that, but hopefully it's okay. So 
I'm only doing about 30 miles per hour, but I'm going to come up to a section here where it's 60 miles per hour, so you'll hear what it's like in a kind of motorway uh, type part of the road. So we'll be going double the speed, we'll be going about 60 miles per hour, and you'll be able to hear the difference because that, that's something to, that you do have to kind of check out. With my action cameras, for example, at this speed, the audio is great, but when you go to the higher speeds, it's, it's quite hard to pick up uh, my voice, pick up the vocals. So, we'll go around here and we'll see how it goes. So, in fact, let's put it on. A little bit quicker now. Now, this car is generally quite quiet, if I'm honest. You know, the isolation in here is quite good, certainly compared to other cars that I've owned in the past. Um, so, the audio should be quite good. So I'm back at home and I've got a veggie burger sizzling up, that's what you can hear in the background. And I'm using the, the ultra wide sensor at the front, the front selfie camera, and I've got the ultra steady mode on. So hopefully, yeah, you maybe see a little bit of stabilization at play here. What I'd like to quickly do is talk about the position of those dual selfie cameras. So there's a 32 and an 8 megapixel sensor here at the front of this phone. But it's in a little bit of a different position to what my last phones were. Previously, the phones had the sensor in the middle at the top of the phone, but both of these camera sensors are at the top left of the phone. It feels a little bit unnatural to me, really, because when I'm when I'm filming this, I'm, I'm kind of looking up the way to where it used to be in my older phones. I just need to get used to this. So when I'm using this in landscape mode, it's at the bottom left, but if you were using it like in portrait mode like that, it would be top left. So it's just not aligned in the middle. That's, it's not a deal breaker, obviously, it's just where they place the sensors, but it's something to take into, con uh, into consideration when you're recording and when you're taking photographs is that you shouldn't be looking at the middle, you should be looking at the kind of top left or bottom left, depending on uh, what orientation you've got your phone in. So as you can see, I'm in my house and it's dark. It is about 25 past 11 at night. So there is a little bit of light because I've got the lamp on there and if I switch on my kitchen LED lights, well, yeah, video quality isn't too bad because there's a lot of light. But what I'm going to do at this point is take the Realme X50 Pro, we'll go outside and we'll see how the dual selfie cameras and the quad camera system at the back handle night time. Let's see how this phone handles low light. So as you can see, it's pretty dark here but I do have some street lights. So I'm using the, the front camera, the selfie camera. I'm not using the ultra wide, I'm just using the 32 megapixel wide sensor. And as you would expect from a selfie camera, it does struggle at night time. So I'm gonna be coming up to a little bit more light here. Should get a little bit better when I come in here. And yes, it's a little bit better here but you can see it does struggle at night time you know there is light but it, it isn't the best it is the same story with the ultra wide as well there just isn't enough light getting in here so it's a little bit dark it's a little bit grainy yeah not the best i mean it is dark here obviously it is dark but you can imagine if you're in a nightclub or something you're not going to get great videos you will get, get good photos at the 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 cameras are really good in low light, but for video, it just, yeah, it just isn't the best. There's a car coming here. So, yeah, this is the ultra wide sensor at the front of the phone. The back camera is infinitely better, and I mean, I'm in the exact same position where I was with the front cameras there. And I mean, look at the difference, it's literally night and day excuse the pun, but you can see how good it is. It's really, really good. So I'm at one time zoom here. If I zoom out, it's it's not as good, but that's to be expected because I've switched to the, to the macro lens. It's not as good a sensor. But if I change back to one time, as you can see, the video quality is really, really good. For low light, this is certainly the, the best smartphone camera I've tested in low light. If I change the zoom, you can see it has been affected. Colours aren't natural though, you know, the, the grass isn't as green as, as that 
in the dark, it's, there's, it's kind of brightening it up a little bit too much. But I can zoom all the way to 20 times and yes, of course it's grainy. That's about three times. I would say that's quite acceptable. But one times, no zoom. This is what you can expect. So I'm now shooting with the back camera again with ultra steady on and it seems to be doing okay but the maximum ultra steadiness is not as good. So I've now set ultra steady max and clearly that relies on a lot of light because when that is activated the back camera becomes really really poor so stabilisation the ultra stabilization, ultra steady max, just isn't something you can use when it's this dark. Going back to the selfie camera, the main camera, the, ma the main sensor, with the uh, stabilization on, um, it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. I don't think it does anyway, looking at it just now. But you guys can be the judge. Overall, there is obviously a marked difference. Uh, the main camera handles low light very well. The front cameras, they don't really stand out. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at all of the footage from the Realme X50 Pro. Hopefully this will allow you to draw your own conclusions as to what this phone can do as far as recording and you know using the selfie camera, using the main cameras for recording video. As you can see in the background, I have been editing this video, the video you, that you're watching just now. And this is an important part of the process for me because it allows me to go through all of the clips that I recorded yesterday, analyze them and, and see what I like and what I don't like. And that's what I'd like to do at this part. I'd like to just give you my opinion on the default camera app and the, the selfie cameras and the main camera system. So we'll st start off with the camera app itself, the, the default camera app, which I suspect is what most people will use. There's a lot of cool features in there. You know, I showed you the bokeh mode. I think it, some of the clips from the, the bokeh uh, footage, it's a little bit artificial maybe, but I thought that it, it is a cool feature and it is something I could see myself using. There's some other cool features in there as well that I've not showed uh, so far, such as slow motion. I thought the slow motion feature was really good. I think it, it works really well. There's a time lapse feature there as well. That again, works really well. Absolutely no complaints there. And overall, the camera app is really good to use. It is user friendly and it's very simple to use. I think they've done a good job. But as user friendly as that camera app, it is also very, very frustrating. I found a lot of little problems with the camera app yesterday and some of those problems were highlighted today. For example, when I was analyzing the clips, I realized that a lot of the clips were stopping early. So I recorded a clip and then I noticed that the recording stopped a couple of seconds before I had actually pressed the, the stop recording button, re the recording button. So what that means is some of the clips that you saw there were maybe kind of cut quite neatly, you know, maybe pieced, pieced together in a strange way. You might have noticed that. There was other clips I just couldn't use because it stopped me speaking mid-sentence. So I had to, you know, kind of stop at a previous point. Now, I don't know why they're doing this. They're kind of stopping the recording a few seconds before you've actually pressed it. I suspect that when you push the, the stop recording button, it needs to write it to file. And for whatever reason, the last few seconds of the recording are not being recorded. This is not something I've experienced with other phones. I'm not sure if this is something that will get with other camera apps. I don't think it is. So this is just a problem of the camera app. But the problems don't stop there. There's, there's a few problems with frame rates as well. You know, this is something that this is something that you do see in other smartphones from time to time. But the selfie camera was, for example, recording at 30.3 frames per second. The back camera would sometimes do 30 or it would do 29.6. For the most part, I, I didn't have any problems putting all these clips together. But the bokeh uh, clips, I had to actually convert them and convert them to 30 frames per second because they were at like 29 or 30 or something. And they were kind of all over the place uh, frame rate wise. So. All of those clips for the bokeh were kind of recording at a different frame rate, so I had to convert them so that the audio was not out of sync. Now, when you're actually playing the video back yourself, you wouldn't notice that, but if you're recording 
a Boca clip for part of you know a, a video that you're putting together lots of different clips you will notice that and it will be a problem so that was a little bit annoying another thing I'm not sure this isn't a deal breaker but I didn't notice it at the time but same when you're recording with ultra steady max not the regular version but ultra steady max it it changes the frame rate to 60 frames per second so that was another puzzling thing that I saw as well it's strange because you've got it set at 30 frames per second you're not changing any settings but when you change to ultra steady max it starts recording at 60 frames per second so that's something I didn't point out earlier in the video but it is something you have to take into account when you switch on ultra steady max it starts recording at 60 frames per second instead of 30. Now my complaint against that is that the phone doesn't actually tell you that it doesn't tell you that it's going to change from the frame rate that you specified but if you change it back to 30, you can't use Ultra Steady Max. So they need to put a warning or something there saying that we are recording at the higher frame rate. There's another little annoying thing as well. This might seem like a, a, a petty thing, but you, you might have noticed that one of the clips that when I was recording, it started vibrating. And the reason is I had received a text message or a WhatsApp message or something. Now, in any other phone that I've used in the past, when you are recording, even if you've got like uh, notifications switched on and all that, when the camera is recording, you're not going to hear mess any noise or any kind of notification message noise to let you know that you've got a message. It will be silent, like it should be. But when I was recording, when I re received some messages, it was vibrating and you could hear the vibrations in the camera, record in, in the video, in the video. So that was strange, very strange. I've not seen that before, but it, it's something that they have to address. But there's another problem, and this is probably my biggest problem with the camera app. When you're recording video, after about 15 seconds, the screen starts fading down and it, go, it fades down until about 20 seconds. Now, that was a huge problem for me when I was recording outside and also when I was recording in the car because it meant that I couldn't see what I was recording. Right now, I am recording with open camera and it was only after a series of tests that I realised that this was a problem with the camera app itself and not the phone and what about what I mean by that is I thought this was a problem with the phone at first I switched off the power save mode I changed the display so that it wouldn't display uh, so they wouldn't you know go to the screensaver after 15 seconds I've changed it to 30 minutes so there wouldn't be any problems like that but every time I click record after 15 seconds it started fading down and then you can't see what you're recording you can't see what you're recording because it goes so dark especially when you're outside you can't see what you're recording. So there was a lot of clips yesterday where I'm holding up in selfie mode. And I'd, after 15 seconds, I didn't even know if I was in, you know, what was in the shot and what I was showing you guys. Very, very frustrating. And right now I'm recording with the open camera app. I can see exactly what I'm recording. There's no issues there. Now, I suspect the manufacturers real me have did this to perhaps protect the CPU, to perhaps stop overheating. I don't know, but... Open camera is working, is working with no problems, so I don't see why the official camera app is doing this. Very annoying, and, it, and I must admit, this is something that will, will frustrate me moving forward if I want to use this phone to record videos. After 15 seconds, it goes dark. So, very frustrating. This is something th they need to address. And that's the thing, you know, this over the, the camera app, usability-wise, feature-wise, it's all good. I think it's a pleasure to use. It is a, a very easy to use as well. But there's a lot of these little quirks in the app that, that stop it from being usable. And until they address those issues, I wouldn't recommend using the default camera app, despite the fact that it's probably the best option for many of you. So that's disappointing. I hope they address that. On a positive note, I think that the audio, you know, the audio quality coming from the microphone is quite good. Now, I have not changed the audio at all in this video, so it might be a little bit quiet. But this is something that... Uh, you know, it's a positive, I would say. I think this is definitely a positive. I don't think this is mind-blowing. I'm sure that if you're a YouTuber, you will certainly use a lavalier mic and you'll use an external microphone. But I do think that the, the, the microphone quality is more than acceptable. So I was quite pleased with the microphone quality from a recording point of view. It, 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 it seemed to be quite good with vocals. Hopefully that's coming through right now. And it wasn't too bad with background noise. It did pick up a little bit of wind noise, you know, a little bit of wind noise when I was outside. That's to be expected, I was outside. So let's talk about the cameras. Let's talk about the cameras themselves. We'll start off with the selfie cameras. 
And overall, I would say the selfie cameras from a video recording perspective is a mixed bag. It's kind of a mixed bag. I find that the 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 default layout of the, the default angle, sorry, the wide angle of the front camera, when you're holding up like that, I feel like it's maybe a little bit too close to me, despite the fact that it's marketed as a wide angle lens. So the 32 megapixel sensor is without doubt the best sensor, but I just found it's maybe a little bit too close. Maybe that's my own preference. I found the ultra wide sensor to be better as far as you know what's included in the shot. The ultra wide sensor, the eight megapixel sensor, was a lot better. But you can't go in between them. You have to select one or the other. Now, I thought stabilization is probably the biggest issue with both of these cameras. Well, stabilization and focusing, I would say that's the biggest issue with all the you know the the whole phone front and back. So stabilization. It, was, it, it wasn't too bad as far as you're moving around. You know, it wasn't like phones a few years ago, you could almost get, you'd feel seasick or car sick when you're watching it. Um, you know, that kind of nauseous feeling when you're watching it because you're jumping around. And I think the default stabilization is good. The ultra steady stabilization is in theory a good feature, but you've got this warping effect. And this is something you see a lot in smartphones when they're trying to fix stabilization. It's like you're almost wobbling around and the background's kind of wobbling around. It was really apparent when I was in the kitchen recording doing that. It just it just didn't look right. It just looked weird. And I think that the ultra steady feature is something they have to work on. The stabilization just doesn't seem to work well when you're recording with the selfie camera. So that is, yeah, that's a negative. Without doubt, that's a negative. The ultra steady feature just doesn't work as good. In low light, I'm sorry, but the selfie cameras just aren't good. You saw that at night time. That I'm not saying that you know other phones don't have this problem as well because they do. But at night time, the the selfie cameras, if you want to use them to record video, you you're not going to be happy with the result. You know, it's just too dark. It's it's just not good. It's too grainy. You really can't see what's going on, and it's borderline unusable. I would I would you know, say the same thing about many smartphones on the market, but it is, I mean, you saw that yourself, it's not something I can hide. When you're recording at night time, the selfie cameras just aren't good. So, yes, that is one disappointing aspect of it. Now, the main cameras, for the most part, I would say are excellent. Now, I'm not going to say the, the main camera system, the back camera, I'm not going to say it's the best, you know, camera phone of the year or anything like that. I'm, I know, I've looked at some footage of other phones and I realise that, there are other phones out there that have got better video recording capabilities, but I would definitely put the Realme X50 Pro in the excellent category when it comes to the back camera, when it comes to recording. You know, low light, the low light performance was excellent. I was astounded by how good this uh, phone could record video in low light. Apart from the ultra steady mode, you saw that that was dark, but apart from that, the recording was amazing. I just thought the overall video quality was fantastic and you can imagine how good that would be as well if you put it in a tripod. Now one thing that I saw in the, the front cameras, the selfie cameras and the back camera was focusing and you probably saw that a lot when I'm panning around, when I'm moving around it and I do realise you know perhaps my video clips aren't as professional as others because I'm just walking around with my hand holding it kind of like a vlogger would but I did notice that there's a lot of occasions where things just go into focus and then they go out of focus and the phone seems to have problems kind of choosing what to focus on. And I noticed that a lot of times it just took a second or two to focus on something and then it moved away. And yeah, just when it came to panning and moving around, things just kind of jump in and out of focus a little bit. And it, it was quite frustrating, that aspect of it. I thought stabilisation was good at the back camera anyway, but the Ultra Steady feature did help. Um, Ultra Steady Max was good as well. Again, you need a lot of light for that, and it does, uh, you know, convert it to 60 frames per second. But stabilization was good, video quality was good. There's just a little bit of a problem with the, the focusing there. I'm not sure if you noticed that as well. Go back and watch the clips if, if, you, if you want to be sure about that. So overall, I will summarize, and I will say that the official camera app is very user-friendly, very easy to use, but it's incredibly buggy. It's got a couple of really strange quirks. It's stopping recordings early and it's shaving off a few seconds of the clip. It's putting the screen out. It's recording video clips at just slightly different frame rates to the point where if you put your clips together, you might have some audio sync issues. 
So there's a few problems like that with the official app, uh, camera app, and I really do hope Realme address these. I do believe most of these issues are software related and they can be addressed. But at, the, at this point, you may want to move towards moving a different Android camera app. As far as the, the actual phone cameras go, I, I, would, I would say that the, the selfie cameras are a mixed bag and the back cameras are excellent. That's what I would say. Now, I'm not saying the, the back cameras are perfect because they're not. As I was saying, there is some uh, you know focusing issues there. But with the selfie cameras, I would say that on occasions I thought it was excellent. But then other times, the stabilisation, it's really warpy if you apply the steady feature. And if you don't, it's maybe a little bit, you know, I just, you know the quality just isn't there. So it's a little bit of a mixed bag. I would probably recommend using a, a tripod like I am right now to record. That's how I'm recording right now. Um, but apart from a, a few focusing issues, which I hope they can fix in the future, I would say the back cameras are excellent. So overall, a lot of these issues that I'm kind of bringing up right now, I, I would hope, my hope, is that these are issues that Realme can address in future software updates and they can improve them. But until they improve some of these issues, I would recommend using a different camera app. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for a closer look at the phone and a closer, uh, a closer look at the phone, the cameras and different things. But I'm going to do an overall video review soon as well that gathers all my thoughts on the phone as a whole, not just the camera. So stay tuned for that. I hope you've enjoyed these clips. And as always, please do leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you think about the footage I have recorded in this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm sure others would as well. So please do leave a comment and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.